Hey everybody, hi. I have absolutely no idea what happened. I unplugged the microphone or whatever it is, whatever it was, and you all disappeared. It ended the live video, so I'm sorry. I hope you can find me. Please find me. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back to the Carrie Jacobson artist page and ask people to find me again. So, live video starting again. Don't know what happened. Please look for me to be live on Carrie Jacobson Artist or wherever you find me. Jacobson Artist. <sighs> Well, hi, everybody. Is anybody back? Yeah, four of you are back. Tracy, okay, great. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I unplugged the thing that I thought was the microphone, and it ended the live video. So, okay, good. Hey, happy 2021, everyone. And whatever happens this year, it's no longer 2020. Thank God, and I do every day. So, um, as you can probably see from my sort of crazy hair, um, I just got back from a walk. It's very windy here. Um, and uh, cold, too, for here. Um, so, that's why, do I, I kind of look like a crazy person with purple hands. Um, so this beautiful picture, I see that Julie Terry Cartner is here with us. She is the woman who took this picture. Hi, Gina DeBona Carter. Happy New Year. And Tracy, and I hope that Barbara Nelson makes her way back to us. Oh. Um, let's see. Barbara Nelson. Barbara Nelson. Barbara Nelson. Oh, there she is. Okay. It's, I think she maybe has come back. It's her first. It's her first workshop, and I, I hate it when, you know, things go wrong. So, um, you know what? I really am gonna message Barbara Nelson to try again. Uh, Barbara Nelson. And everybody, pick up on the new the new live workshop, huh? Um. No, for some reason, I can't. So, okay. Well, we are going to just... Oh, good, she's back. Barbara, it wasn't you, it was me. So, and Carol, whoa, I hope you're here still. Okay. So, this painting, as I as I mentioned, was taken by Julie Kartner, who is here on the workshop with us. And she's um, a wonderful painter, a very nice person, sister of my neighbor, Ann Terry Swick, down the street. And they're both good photographers. So this is a picture, and you'll find it in the event listing uh, and also in the thing I posted at 1245. Um, and if after the workshop you'd like me to send you this picture bigger, I'm happy to. Um, the um, And I'll say it again because I said it on the first one, but I didn't say it on this one. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy 2021. And delighted to be off to a brand new year, aren't you? So, um, the reason that I picked this picture uh, is I love the colors. I really love the color in the water, um, frankly, that's, and the shadows. And um, I love how bright it is back there and how dark and cool it is in the front. And I love this little curve of the land. And so I always ask you to, um, before you start to paint, to figure out why you like the scene that you're looking at and, um, and keep that in mind as you're painting. So here's my palette. I've got, it's more or less my regular palette, except I took out some pinks. So uh, French Ultramarine, I have two turquoises. I'm still on my turquoise jag. Yes, I am. Uh, this is a, a violet gray. Oh, I need a regular cobalt purple, which 
which I know I have here somewhere, which is usually my dark. A combination of that and some blues are usually what count as shadows and darkness for me. And then I had a red, which you saw, which is runny, that I'm probably not going to use. And this is a sap green, this bright green, and then a, an ochre. Uh, burnt sienna. This is actually, this is a wonderful color. It is a um, transparent orange oxide. Um, it's more expensive. It costs more than I like to pay. It's this. Rembrandt. Transparent orange oxide. It's about 15 bucks for a tube this size as opposed to about $8 for a tube this size. Um, but it's this one. It's worth it and then on the other side I have a cadmium yellow lemon yellow this is a it's like a bright Naples yellow then I'm skipping my pinks and I have an orange this is an odd color this is a metallic orange that I picked up on sale somewhere and then this is a sort of well that's this rose lumiere I don't know how many of these I'll use but there they are so all right and I'm using uh, palette knives and um, I'll show you my favorites. Uh, so this is my very favorite. It's very flexible. And um, I, I have a little bit of control over it. Uh, sometimes I have too much control over it, which is not good for my painting. And Susan Irving Krauss, hello, everybody. And uh, then this one, I might be using this one. This is a big one. I haven't used it much. Probably use it for the background, these low background trees. And then this is a sort of medium one. Oops. This is a sort of medium one that I like. Also very flexible. All three of these, my favorite ones, are very flexible, which helps me press hard into the canvas. And also um, it gives me a kind of a glide when I put paint over paint. So, all right, so off we go. Um, I am going to start by getting that horizon line in, and uh, I'm going to do that in a very light. I'm going to use a buff titanium and um, mix it with a little bit of blue to kind of gray it out a little bit and a little bit of white. So I'm putting a bunch of paint on the back of my medium palette knife and first I'm going to just outline that that horizon line and then and then I'm going to outline a little bit the curve of the river okay and now my favorite spot here So clearly the bottom is way too light and the top is way too dark, but that's a place to start. So um, now I'm loading up again and I'm just going to, uh, in the background, if you're using a knife or I would say if you're using a brush, I'm going to make this a little bit brighter. And you know what? I am going to put a little bit of this weird pink, pinky orange thing in. If you're using a brush or a knife, Go, go pretty thin on these these background trees. They're not they're not important. I mean, they're important as a placeholders, and they give you depth. They're important, but if you make the back stuff uh, thin, put the paint on thin, then it lets you put the paint on thicker in the front where you want to have more attention, where you want the attention to be more. Do you want the, is that true? Do you want the attention to be in the front? I'm not sure you always want the attention to be in the front, but what it does do is give you depth and perspective if it's thicker in the front and thinner in the back. I suppose if you did it the other way, you could, that would work too, and maybe I'll try that sometime. Or maybe you guys will try that sometime. 
Um, but you're going to cover this over with a lot of stuff. Now, it's much brighter on this side. So keep that in mind. But let's go put the sky in. Um, now that we've got the horizon more or less in, let's, let's give ourselves some sky. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use some ultramarine and some turquoise and a lot of white. There we go. This might be a little too dark, but I can lighten it up at the horizon. So I put the, the paint on the back of my knife. Um, I assume that's how everybody does it, who paints with a palette knife, but I don't know. Now your sky can be smooth. You could do long, smooth strokes like that if you want. Um, I'm doing a little slightly jaggedy, uh, a little bit overlapping strokes like that. I'm still using that same knife. I'm going to need more white, so might as well get it now. Marilyn Beauvais is back. Yay. And Jean, I'm assuming Jean is with you, Marilyn. Um, it's nice to see you people again. I've missed you. I, I, I worked, I did lots and lots and lots of commissions in November and December, which was great. Um, uh, but it was very tiring and it took me away from the workshops. Uh, I needed my Saturdays and I also needed some rest, some downtime, you know, I took, I took most of the week off after Christmas, after Christmas, I guess the first week, the first week of the new year, I mostly took off. Um, and that was good. I really needed it. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit more white over here. And, you know, you can go back and neaten this up. Boy, does this seem higher than before. I have had a lot of shoulder troubles with, uh, with all the the work I did. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can sort of smooth the, um, the trees and the sky into each other. Don't have to do it the whole way across, but it gives you a, um, a little feeling of distance. Uh, and all I'm doing now is dragging my knife very gently across the uh, place where the sky and the trees meet. And not all of them. It's a lost and found edges sort of thing. Okay. You all with me so far? Um, looks cool like this with just the black showing, doesn't it? <laughs> so, okay. Uh, let's put in, let's darken this up a little bit down in the front. How about that next? Let's move you around the painting a little bit. So I'm taking some of my um, transparent orange oxide and mixing it with some purple. See that right there? That's the color I've mixed. And uh, it's a, I think it's, a, it's a, just a wonderful combination. And uh, I'm going to make that beautiful curve there. And my trouble with using paint that costs $15 for a tiny little tube is that I, I use a lot of paint. And, um, you know, I don't, I mean, I, I, I sell the paintings for, you know, good money, but still it's, so that's part of it. And then also the more expensive paint has more pigment in it. It's called, it has a heavier pigment load. And so if I mix it with something, um, a, a, a less expensive paint, I have to use 
relatively much, 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 much more, um, or the, the expensive one just takes over the inexpensive one. I'm going to mix a little of the violet blue in there too. And these we're gonna we are gonna we're gonna have shadows along here. They might be end up being blue. And then as long as we've got this dark stuff going on, um, let's do these dark edges. So back here, very dark, and then you've got and it lightens up a little bit, but you still got some darkness going across here. And then you have that that bank, this shadowed bank. I think it's under a, it's actually under a fallen tree, but I'm going to leave the tree out. So there we go. And um, the, where it comes around, there's a dark space. Okay. Um, again, while we have the dark out, why don't we work on this dark, see this is a lovely triangular sort of dark shadow going into the, the back of the painting there. So I'm going to, I still have that dark I'm working on now. I mixed a little bit of my sky in with it. So I have this. And um, um, I'm just... Um, these are going to be the, the um, not stems, what do you call them, the trunks, trunks of trees. So just put in a, an uneven line of dark, dark stuff uh, going across. And then, then take your knife and with the tip of it, start pulling up, pulling up the dark into looks like I need more pulling up the dark into the light that you already put on there so I need more dark stuff so you know if you have to go back and add more paint a couple times that's fine you can there we go so now I'm not not using the very 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 tip of the knife but just along the tip, pulling, pulling those branches up, those uh, trunks, pulling those trunks up. And over here in the front, they're going to be taller. Behind there is some, looks like maybe some leaves, fallen leaves. So I'm going to take a little bit of um, my sky, my, um, my original background trees and I mixed it with a little bit of golden ochre. Hi Ann Hudson. Happy New Year to you too. And I'm going to put a little line of this back there. This is what I'm going for there is that little triangle of brightness. Smart person might have put that in first but it's okay because it's all going to be kind of smeary back there. Um, and you know you wanted uh, something exactly like it looks, you'd have a photograph. And there is a gorgeous photograph that, on Facebook. So, and that brings me to what I should have, I guess, started out at. With first is that I am self-taught. I'm not telling you that this is the right way to paint. I'm just telling you this is how I paint and this is how I would paint this, this scene. So, um... No, you don't, you see some, oops, I lost my whole orange business there. When you're looking at the woods, you see some individual tree trunks. When you stop and focus on them, you see them. But uh, mostly you see masses, you know, you see the forest, not the trees, mostly. 
So um, these are sort of impressionistic, impressionistic trees here. I'm going to take a darker one. I hope everybody's well. The COVID is really closing in on us here on the Eastern Shore. Uh, and it's kind of scary. Now, there's little bits of green back in there, too. So I'm taking some sap green and mixing that with those background grays. And put some of them in back here. Um, we haven't even touched those pine trees back there, but, uh, and then I'm dragging that through. Okay. And then you might want to take some white on either the edge of your knife or on a little brush and here and there put some lighter colored trunks in just where the light might pick them up we are going to put actually is that a tree or yeah that is a tree it almost looks like one of those fake uh those fake cell tower trees you can put it in now you can put it in later um Try not to space these white trees too evenly. Mine are spaced a little bit too evenly for me, but I can go back and fix that after or change it. Shouldn't really be talking about fixing it. Now it's winter, so there's no, we don't really have to worry about leaves here, but we do have those pine trees. So um, you can do pine trees in a bunch of ways. Um, I'll show you one of my favorites sort of impressionistic pine tree. Uh, I've got some sap green in here on the one that's in the light. I've got a little bit of light green. So I'm just, I have just daubed some paint on and then I'm taking my brush, I mean my knife, whatever this thing is, my knife. And I gotta get more down here, okay. And uh, I'm going, going through the pine tree sideways with the tip of my knife to give it a pine tree-ish <laughs> feeling. Uh, you can add brights if you want or darks. You can um, you can uh, emphasize the horizontalness. Um, put a stem in then cover it up in some places because you never see the entire tree trunk. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to put a third one in because I like threes. I'll move that one off a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to blob some, blob some green in there. And then I'm going to drag, let's see. I'm going to drag my knife through it, going across, and you know, it's a little, it's a little stagey, it's a little contrived, but I kind of like those. <laughs> and uh, apparently today's a day when I really like those, because that's how I did the, uh, that's how we did these tree trunks too. So um, I'm going to put some more of them in up here. go back in with a little bit more of my orange triangle thing okay now it's 124 there's a couple major places in this painting that's one of them so um, take a moment to turn away from your painting put your tool down Shake out your fingers, your hands. Ah. 
go ah! Do a little stretch. You might be kinked up a little bit. Some of us have us have coffee. In my beautiful south of the border coffee mug. <laughs> um Okay. And now look back at your painting. Yeah, looks pretty good. We're getting there. So uh, we're going to move on to this bank now. And this bank has a lot of yellow along here. So we're going to start there. And um, I'm going to use some cadmium yellow. And I, I have to tell you, I'm using it partly because I squeezed it out. I could use any kind of yellow. But I squeezed this yellow out for a project I was doing um, and I squeezed out too much of it, and so I have a huge lump of it. And uh, so I might as well use it now. So here we go. Uh, but you can use whatever yellow you might want or you might have out on your palette. There we go. And it just... Now, while I have it on my knife, there's some yellow, there's some bright light over here, too. So I'm going to put that over there. And then, if you wanted to, you could start putting in some of the lights down here. Probably not a bad idea. Um, and they don't have to, you don't have to use this bright. You don't have to use this kind of yellow. But like I said, I had this yellow out, and I'd, I'd like to use it. Um, This yellow goes back. The, the light the light is coming just like that, you know, across here like that. So it's very bright over here. I'm going to, I'll take some of this yellow. And I, now I've mixed it with my titanium buff. And then I had a little bit of green mixed in there. Let's see what I've got here. This is sort of a mishmash of tree colors that are all sort of mixed up together. And I'm picking this up to do the trees on the left side of this painting because they're very bright over there. Um, we'll put some darker ones in, and some lighter ones in. Um, and some, just some plain old titanium buff, which is an unbleached titanium. And then I'm gonna put some of these bigger trees in. And this is just, I'm using mostly uh, white um, here for these guys. So I'll mix a little bit of the brown in, see what happens. Because we're gonna have to go back and make a dark edge on these. darker back there. There are a couple dark spots in the backgrounds here. Okay. Um, so yeah, take a, a couple take some uh, dark edge make some dark trees. Now you can make these trees, you can move your knife or your brush like that, especially as you're going up. Twirl it and make them very tree-ish. I'll make one in blue to show you better. So I'm, I'm moving up and moving my, turning my knife, uh, and that makes a very natural looking tree or you can do like Cynthia Rosen Malter does it's a wonderful painter she says she uses trees for excitement so she does big straight lines just like that and uh, they really do add you really do add some energy to your painting if you do it that way I'm gonna take a little bit of purple on the edge of my knife and um, 
make some of the fill in some of the shadows on these trees. Let's see, I can also make some brighter ones too while I'm over here. And you don't have to do them all one way or the other. You can do them both. Both the, the Jean Beauvais, hold your knife and twist it. If I'm going up, it's much easier for me to stand. Twist it. I wonder if you can see that or if I was totally in the way of that. Twist it. Or that thing. It's up to you. There's probably 800 other ways to do trees. And uh, I remember saying that somebody looking at uh, a painter from the Wallkill River School. Wow, how do you, your trees are so fantastic. How do you do trees like that? And she said, do 10,000 of them. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay. But really, if you just keep doing trees and keep doing trees and keep doing trees and think about trees. I know some painters who basically make their living painting trees. And they're wonderful. Wonderful paintings. Um, I'm going to put some back here. I'm going to make a little dark secret place here. And why is that dark? I don't know. But it'll be, that would be one of the one of the mysteries of this painting, which is a thing I love. I've also just introduced turquoise. And at some, some point, you're going to want to introduce some turquoise somewhere. It's, we're going to have it in the water, but it's often nice if you have it somewhere else, too. So, okay. So, way back in this stream. Are you guys all okay? I'm not getting any comments or questions or anything so you know take a moment and step away from your picture and type in a question if you have one maybe you don't so my love in this painting is the colors so I'm gonna go with the deep turquoise in the back back here and um, so I and I have two I have two turquoises and I'll show you what I have this is the the very deep this one it's a Windsor Newton phthalo turquoise and it's wonderfully dark and this I'm gonna put back here all right and so that's too dark because on the black canvas it's just black. So I'm I'm mixing it with a little bit of my sky blue. Go back over it. That's a little bit lighter. If you don't have turquoise, use uh, use some kind of blue. Use uh, ultramarine. Um, and then I'm going to wrap this turquoise around. Now this turquoise turns not not such a pretty color as it comes out into the sun, but I'm going to leave it a pretty color because I'm a painter and I like that color and the heck with it. The heck with it. This goes all the way down to there. Okay. Then the next layer of this river is, it's you know what, it's almost brown. It's green, brown, blue, turquoise. So this is one of these things where you try some stuff and you try some stuff and it works and it works or it doesn't work. So I'm going to take some of my golden ochre. I'm going to take a little bit of sap green. I'm going to take a little bit of the turquoise that I just mixed with my sky blue. And there is all of that stuff on the back of my knife. I think I need some more blue. So there it is with some more blue. And I am going to take it in a swirling circle. No? Okay, so what I need is a little bit more white. So there's a white, brown, turquoise. 
Okay, and that's a little bit too yellow. But I'm loving the swirl. So I'm mixing some turquoise with some white. You don't have to do it in one big swirl like that. Um, but to me, that's sort of where the fun of the painting is. I mean, and then down here, we've got some going back to my uh, uh, whatever it is, golden ochre. I wonder what's reflecting there. I don't really know. But it's lovely. So um, we take a little bit more of the golden ochre, mix it with a little bit of purple. Green, just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to draw that down like that. move your knife through it like that so okay so then we have the dark business in the middle and I put down purple there originally and I'm gonna stick with that and this there must be a ridge or something underneath the water I'm bringing that across and then that that forks a little bit So I'm going to draw that down this way. So much green in this water. It's kind of lovely. And then it has a very yellow edge, a yellow and whitish edge along the front. So I'm going back to the, the oops, now I've got stuff all over my too busy painting okay that's fine that's the best answer julie hello mary smith <laughs> good to, good to see you guys okay so it has this sort of light very light brown along there what what is that i'm going to try it as this which is uh, no that's not quite it okay that's all right and then I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the sort of greenish blue water over here you know again we're using the we're using this as inspiration and it's so nobody is gonna come along and say the water really wasn't that color that day or it didn't swirl like that or what about you know the what about the tree that you missed there um i mean you might do that to yourself and i i, I would i would hope that you don't but you know we all do i know we do you know somebody might say what's all the yellow in the water i don't know i might go back and i might tame that down but right now i really like it now the here is a light patch of sort of indeterminate color so I'm going to go with some, some white and some, I, I'm going to go with the colors that I, look, here's what I have on my palette. And I'm going to basically add a little bit of white and sort of scoop these up and see if that's those colors. My, my guess is it is. And the water goes off that way. So is it those colors? I don't know. We'll, we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Water goes off that way there, and I think it swirls around. I feel, for me, that if I don't experiment, if I don't try things, if I don't have the courage to mess up my painting at, at any point in it, 
uh, then I'm limiting my learning. Um, for, for me, growth and learning come from trying stuff, seeing if it works, seeing, I don't know, I don't know. Hi, Tiffany Williams. Oh, I miss you too. You like my outfit? Thank you, especially my hat. Um, you know, if I, if I don't try things, then I don't, I don't get new ideas. I don't get inspiration. Um, so, you know, I try, I just, I try a lot of stuff. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. And, um, but I learn, I learn from, from everything. So, you know, if this water isn't working for you, well, you can go back and fool with it later, but, but go with your heart, go with your gut, try it, and then, and then stand back and look at it. And if you're lucky, you'll have a friend or a couple friends and you can say, wow, do you think this works? Um, Peter was my guy. He was my, you know, I'd haul him out here. You gotta come out here and see, do you think this works? And you know, well, do I miss that? But I, but I have friends. I mean, I don't have anybody who has, you know, I don't have him. Um, okay. Water, water, water. So, you know, we did a lot of the, uh, the water business where you go, where you go vertical first and then over it and you can pull that in here I mean you can do that the whole length of the stream if you want but I'm I'm I like the flow the flowy business of it um, up there and then and then uh, so you can do some of the vertical stuff you know go down with your strokes or up and then bring your knife or your brush through it and then in this front corner it's another beautiful color and it's another turquoise but sort of mixed with more sky blue so i'm going to mix my turquoise with my uh french ultramarine and this is the other turquoise this is the opaque turquoise which is where which is where where's that turquoise oh come on carrie hmm. So a box full of paints, and you'd think, no, oh, is that it? Down underneath everything? No. Well, ah, oh, there it is. This, Gamblin 1980 turquoise. A lovely color. And that's what I'm going to put down in here. So I'm going to take my knife. go out to meet that other water and then sort of pull it back now here's a place where you probably you might want to do the vertical thing I probably should have done it first so now do the vertical thing first and then maybe take a little bit of white on top of it go over it And I think most of you know what I mean by the ver the vertical thing. Barbara Nelson, you might not, um, but you you draw your stroke down when you're doing water. Draw your stroke down first, and then across. And it gives you a, a feeling of depth and shadows and movement. Cool. Okay. Now I'm going to take my purple and make these dark shadows. So I'm going to use some, use some green and some brown and some purple all mixed together. Big black, dark bank of shadows. Over here, we've got some light stuff. So I'm gonna use some titanium, some buff titanium and some sap green. And, um, geez, I need water going into that little inlet, don't I? Hmm. 
Well, we'll, well, we'll go back for that. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Ooh, that's nice. Wow, isn't that pretty? Could I do that again if I wanted to? Let's see. Let's see. Titanium. The brown. The yellow. And then... Nope. <laughs> nope. So that's one of those happy accidents. Just going to leave that. And try to remember not to paint over that. Uh, so this is that light bag. And I am going to I am going to put that tree in. But that's going to be the last thing I'm going to do. And if you guys don't want to put that tree in, after you've gone to all the work to make this painting, you don't want to drag a tree all the way through it, don't. You're not required. Because who knows, maybe by now that tree has even fallen down. You don't know. Or been taken out by... taken out by uh, big rain. Okay, now we're going to put the water in that little inlet. So, it's a pretty... It's this inlet. And then the bank here. The place where you might want to drag the water down. The bank, the reflection of the bank. So, use some vertical strokes. Up or down. And then go back with a lighter color over that. Move your knife or your brush along. There you go. And then there's some more light. I've missed a little bit of light water back here. Think that wants to be vertical? It might. Oh, down at the bottom of that bank, in fact, of most banks, is uh, a dark strip. And you want to remember that. It's a, it's a thing that makes, it makes the eye, it, it's a trick. It tricks the eye into recognizing a bank. Because where the water and the earth meet, water seeps in, makes the bank dark. And then over on the other side, we got a little bit to finish. Kind of medium, darkish. There we go. Make that a little uneven. Um, okay, let's see. We want a little bit of... Sorry, drifted away for a moment there. Uh, kind of a neutral color. A little bit of neutral over on that bank because it's got some sun on it, but it's it's uh, backgroundy sun. It's not full sun like on the other bank. Interesting. This is not the painting I thought I would end up with. Uh, I, I used to do these paintings first, always, for the workshop, and I decided this year I'm, I'm not going to. I'm just going to do them along with you. Um, they're fresher that way. Of course, I run the, run the risk of failing. Bob Ross always did the paintings. He did them and did them and did them until he could do them basically in his sleep. Um, but he probably didn't end up with such a cool swirly thing in the middle of any of his paintings either. And I really like it. I'm going to put a little bit of some white caps in. Because there are some. And does this read as water? I don't know. I'm going to have to 
I'm going to have to look at this. I'm going to have to look at this more. Um, it might not read enough as water. I might need to go back and make it more, less abstract. But right now, I'm really, really liking it. What if, what if that came out? Okay, so then how about that tree? Where are we? 150. We got 10 minutes to make the tree. Hi, Darlene. Oh, thanks. No, oh, thanks, Diana Davis. And Diana Davis, are you painting, I wonder? Anne Hudson, thank you. Okay, so this big, this big tippy tree, you know, why not put it in? I'll have the courage of my convictions. I'm not going to put that big root in because for me that's incomprehensible. So actually, there are a couple trees there, aren't there? Three. So, what do you think? Three is good. <laughs> Let's be brave. Let's be brave. Okay, so here's the back one. It goes all the way top to bottom. Here's the medium one. Kind of curves. All right, and I'm going to get them in a little bit better. So what I've done is I've taken purple on the back of my small knife and uh, put in basically the, the shadow sides of these trees. I'm just I'm being unafraid. <laughs> Do you think I really am unafraid? No but I am being unafraid. All right, and now I'm gonna put a light edge on and uh, I'm gonna use some of the orange. I'm gonna use this orange in a couple places, I think, and if not, there, now I have. Uh, the bright orange also would be nice. There's a bright orange, a little bit of that. If you really want to pop it, stick some white on there. Let's see. Red is also a great one for highlighting light. Uh, and you can be as, you know, there are these really pretty light light rays and shadows on this tree, and you can be as exacting as you want with that. Um, I tend to just do it in stripes. Okay, and now for the big leaning tree. And this one's really scary because it's going top to bottom of this canvas. So where do I want it to go? There we go. Ah! <laughs> Because you know what? Oh, for heaven's sakes, if we're not having fun, what's the point? That's why I started doing these, because the COVID was so tough on everybody. And people were so trapped in creativity. You know, I mean, I, I don't have a million dollars to make a vaccine or change the world or any of that stuff. But I can give a free workshop and maybe open the window of creativity to people. Now... There's not much light on the light side of that tree, but I'm putting it on anyways. Uh, in fact, I'm going to use some bright yellow. Because uh, this tree, this tree is going to tie the whole everything together, isn't it? In fact, maybe I'll use some of the cadmium yellow. Now there's an idea. It's in the middle of the river. Ooh, use that for my bright side. Cool. Now that I have that out, I think I'll put some of it over there on some of the, the taller trees. Okay. 
Now, where are we at? 155. Carol Bainey! <laughs> and Terry Swick. Looks like water you do. Good. Because I told you it's water. That's why you think it's water. Um, <laughs> so. All right. Big tree needs work. Needs some more detail down at the, like, how, how does it possibly staying its roots are. I guess I do have to put in some roots after all. And for some of you, the roots might be what this whole painting is about. Um, I'm not that good with detail. And, uh, and so for me, this painting is not about the roots. And plus, I really don't want to cover over that beautiful accident of color there. But I will put the roots, some roots in a little bit. Um, but really, for, for you guys, you know, maybe it's the roots of this this scene, these, these beautiful, you know, holding on. Because we are all holding on. And maybe this is what this painting is about to you. To me, it's a swirl of water and the way the light goes through it. Um, as, as the river winds its way along, winds its way along. So, you know, I'm going to look at this and see it might might be too busy with the water here might not be i'm going to live with it for a while um right here i think is the first place where i could legitimately stop this painting and that's a thing that i always look for it's one more thing i'll put a little bit of white along um i always look for the first place where i could stop the painting and I like to stop there. Now, I don't always stay stopped there, but I often do. And um, to, for, for me, for my painting, there's a freshness in that. Um, you know, I can fuss, believe me, I can fuss along and diddle along with the, the best of you. And, uh, but when I do, I feel like it just takes the life out of the paintings for me. So I try to stop early and um, you can always go back and put more in. It's very, very hard to take stuff out. I think I should not be doing that. So, uh, so I'm going to leave it and I'm going to take a look at it. I'm going to live with it for a little bit of time. See, I do keep seeing things that I know will make it a little bit better. But if you put in too many things that make it a little bit better, then you just end up with, or I end up with a busy mess is what I end up with. So, um, you'll find your way, you guys, yourselves. There's a little bit of a bank I, I missed there that I'd like to put in. You know, look at the original painting. Continue to remember what excited you. Sometimes in painting I find that something else. Sometimes I find that something other than what I thought that the painting is about for me something other than what I thought it was about. So um, that's something to watch out for too. And I think that's growth in your vision and in maybe your knowledge of yourself. For me, it is, you know, when I'm surprised by, oh, that's what I love about that painting. Um, a lot of times that's a real, that's a real growth step for me. So, um, oh, yeah. 158. I'm going to post this on um, Carrie Jacobson Workshop videos page. And feel free to email me, uh, carriebjacobson at gmail.com, or message me through Facebook um, if you have questions or problems. Um, I hope that you'll post your picture of your painting when you finish it. And um, I guess that's it. <laughs> I'll be sending a newsletter out soon. If you don't get my newsletter, either go to jacobson-arts.com and sign up for it or send me your email and I'll add you to my list. Um, I do these workshops many Saturdays. I might do them every other Saturday. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I do private workshops. If you want to do that, contact me. Uh, $50 an hour and it's just you and me online. And... Um, and, you know, happy painting. And if I can help you in any way, 
just just let me know i'm here to answer questions i'm here to help you make painting more central to your life if you can and if that's what you want because it i think it heals all of us it sure is healing me so thanks everybody bye here i'll give you one last picture one last view of my painting up close can i do that Ooh, there we go okay bye <laughs>